This is the crossover event I think you have all been waiting for. I'm Arzu, and with me is Candice. Hello. And we are joined today by Omi Daptehi. I am so excited you're here. How are you? I'm doing good. It's just, it's it's really nice to hear my name pronounced, uh, you know, the, the way it's meant to be pronounced. <laughs> you have trouble at Starbucks? Like, I mean, no, I mean, people try, like, the people say Abtahi, I say Abtahi, you know, just I Americanize the last name, a lot of us do, uh, but mm -hmm. to say Abtahi, the way it's like, you know, it just, it's just a nice change, that's all, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, I mean, how... How have you been since I guess Mando season three? Your your the the big season for Doctor Pershing. How have I been? I mean, like been? I feel like I th I think like the episode aired in March, and then the strike happened shortly after that. I'm glad that you know the episode in the season aired when we could talk about it. Otherwise, I would have probably lost my mind. I don't know how those Ahsoka people did, but like, yeah, it's just it's so it's really hard not to talk about what you love. Um, so I'm glad I got to enjoy it. You know, I, I thought I was so proud of how it turned out. I was so proud of the this kind of story we told. Um, and I know it was a little bit different than you know the show is otherwise, but um all the all the right kind of people loved it. And I love talking to people about it. Um, I love the people who get the nuance in the story and in the character. Um uh, but aside from that, the last nine months or eight months I've been a strike and uh just trying to keep my my head up. You know, it's been it's been tough, but I'm glad I'm glad work is starting up again. Not for me personally, but for it seems like everybody else. Yeah. What was it like when you found out you were getting a whole episode? Yeah, that's a good question. Like, I I remember like first I got the call that I was going to be in season three and I was just really excited at that. But like my first two seasons, I worked maybe like four days, five days max for the entirety of the seasons, you know. And so they're like, oh, yeah, so we're going to need you to be available on this, this day, this day, this day, this day, this day, this day, like for like 19 days. I was like, oh, that's oh, that's the availability. You know, that's how long they're taking to shoot the episode. Right. He's like, no, no, those are your work days for one episode. And I about pooped my pants, you know, like <laughs> it was it was uh, I was like, wow, OK, what's going on? And then I got the script. And I, my, I was, uh, my stomach was turning. I was nervous. I started getting anxiety, but I was like, you know what? I've been training my whole life. You know, I'm an actor. I know how to do this. I'm, there's good people on set. You know, no one's going to, everyone's going to make sure you do a good job. Uh, so I was okay. And then uh, I saw those featurettes they come out with, you know, the behind the scenes of the Mandalorians, uh, the Mandalorian seasons. And I try. I watched the season two one, and I had to turn it off like in ten minutes because I wanted to puke because I was like feeling the pressure again of having to, uh, you know. Thankfully, Katie was there the whole time, but like to kind of hold up this story, you know, it's it's a lot to give, you know, a side character such a large spotlight. And like, and I'm aware of that. They are aware of that, uh, and they knew they were taking a risk with it. But um, so you know, I was nervous. I was anxious. But more than that, I was excited. Um, so yeah, it was uh, it was a very good feeling. Yeah, all in all. So there was never talk like in the first few seasons, like, "Hey, you're gonna need an episode later down on the road." It was That's just not like how it works. No, not at all. <laughs> no, they're like, "We hope to we hope to see you again." You know, like it's yeah. uh, you you go into the end. Well, you go yeah you you go into the end of each season not knowing whether you're gonna be back. Like I have no idea if I'm gonna be back again. But you know whether I'm. They have me back or not, it has been one of the best, you know, experiences of my life. So not as an actor, but, you know, as a human being. So if you get the call, you know, season to season that you're coming back, when you first came for season one, how much did you know about Dr. Pershing? Like going in, was it just what was on the page? Did they give you kind of any additional context? Um, I mean, this was like four years ago, so my memory is kind of hazy. But uh Fair when I, when I, when I, they just, so I didn't audition for it. You know, I, I, they, I was, they was offered to me and I don't, I say that like very insecurely because I've only been offered things like maybe like three or four times. And this was one of them. Uh, so I didn't know it was the way it was like sold to me. was like, it is an untitled John Favreau project for this new streaming platform that Disney is doing. 
Uh, and then I Googled it and it was like, oh, it's an untitled Star Wars series. Is that it? And my agent's like, yeah. Um, and so I was like, I was like, they want me to audition. He's like, no, 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 they're offering it to you. I was like, what are they smoking? Like, what's going on? Like, why is this happening to me? Um, but so I was very excited to be a part of it. And then I didn't know anything about it. I had not read the script when I said yes. I didn't need to read the script when I said yes. Um, uh, I didn't read the script when I did the part. Like, <laughs> you only get your lines, um, come to think of it. Um, but I went in for the costume uh, fitting. And uh, I, it was there that I realized, you know, I was playing an imperial character. But they're like, do you know anything about your character? I was like, I know nothing. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, I don't know anything. They're like, well, we can't tell you, but it's really cool. And I was like, oh, really cool. So I'm just getting outfitted for, for Dr. Pershing. Um, and you honestly, like, if I'm being completely truthful, that those first season, the first two seasons, I didn't really know what I was. I didn't have a clear idea what I was doing. Like, I knew he was an imperial scientist. I knew, you know, but the lines, like, kind of seemed to be like, he was he was not black and white. He was like he was very gray to me. He always presented that way. And I think like they had me play it a couple ways to try to figure out where best he would land. So so what was the original question? <laughs> I think I've gone off. <laughs> but like, did I know anything about him? No. I don't think I knew Dr. Pershing until like season three. <laughs> well, there's that scene in season one where Mando's like is comes in and you're like oh i kept i kept the child safe yeah and that's when i was like oh there's more to this guy i want to know like so there was like they weren't too sure like if he were going to be like so it was a no. chance this point. i think they've told me once or twice where they're like hey we were, we were we're supposed to kill that character at the end of season one so like i don't i don't know i don't know what the outline is for the character where he falls in the greater story but uh, the direction it's taken, I'm, you know, more than thrilled with. And I just hope to, you know, whatever universe that uh, it continues. But yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, we don't, I don't know. No. When I do this I mean, stuff, I have we, no idea. We hear. <laughs> what? We maintain he's fine. The two of us. We maintain he's fine. He just needs some ibuprofen, some water. He's and just, like, just to bring the swelling fine. down. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, I trust them. If there is a good story to tell, I trust that they'll, they'll tell it. Um, if I had my way, I, I would love for it to be like a Frankenstein moment, you know, okay. I, and to see what comes on, what, you know, what is on the other side of that mind flare? Like, I, I don't know. I don't think it's death. I just don't. I don't know. But um, we'll funny. find out soon enough if there's anything. Yeah. Um. So this is not your first Star Wars project. If I'm correct, remember you're correct. Correctly, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what for you was the difference in besides you know the medium of animation versus live action? The difference in working on the Clone Wars versus working on the Mandalorian. So when I did the Clone Wars, I did not have the the knowledge I had about the Star Wars universe uh, that I do now, or that I did in season one, because you know I just did a couple episodes, and you know I didn't feel like I needed to watch everything to familiarize myself with it um so but when i got you know the mandalorian i went and i watched the entire catalog uh at least of the movies um uh there's no tv shows yet um but uh yeah i just felt way more knowledgeable i felt way more comfortable in the world where before i was just kind of winging it and treating it like a you know another voiceover job yeah if i'm being truthful yeah You've gone to some conventions. What is it like meeting fans? It's so awesome. Star Wars fans, we're a bit enthusiastic. They're so <laughs> enthusiastic. And the ones that come up are usually like 98% of the time very positive and are the ones who are like, oh, it's, you know, it's really interesting because like they I have people who come up, they're like, ooh, I didn't like your character. Stay away from Baby Yoda, you know, like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> And, and then the next person that comes up after that is like, thank you so much for like protecting baby Yoda. He wouldn't, you know, be alive if it wasn't for you. <laughs> so like this, like this, this hot and cold take on Dr. Pershing is exactly like what I think it should be. Like, I mean, what it should be is like somewhere in between, like, like, you know, like 
I don't think he's entirely bad. I don't think he's entirely good. I don't entirely trust him. Uh, but that, that the, those hot and cold takes are really interesting for me when it comes from fans. But And I just love that those fans that have given a lot of thought. Like They're like, this is where I can see this story going. This is where I see the life of Dr. Pershing beyond this. And I, I just really enjoy that. And I love, yeah, I just, I, 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 I love meeting fans. Like whether it's at a convention or on the street, uh, it's, it's, it's all, it's all awesome. So you've been recognized after the Mandalorian, like on the street. Is that the first time? No, like, no. 24 uh, was the first time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. 24 was a pretty hot show. Um, was so uh, long ago. That was so long ago. It was 2000. <laughs> Sorry. I was just like, that was, that was very popular. My dad loved it. The the show, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I remember the first time I got recognized. It was like it was two thousand four. So twenty four is my second job, and I had done an episode of Jag, and twenty four hadn't come out yet. I, and I did one episode for twenty four, but that was enough, you know. And my mom is like, so like like what do you what do you like? Have you been recognized yet? I'm like, mom from Jag? No, of course not. Like, like. I'm like, let it go. I'm just going to be one of those actors that, you know, I'm just going to fly under the radar. And like, literally, as I was telling her this, a car pulls up, like two Persian dudes uh, outside my, like, they're like, they roll down the window. They're like, I'm like, they're like, excuse me. They're like, are you from 24? And 24 hadn't even aired yet. So that I was like, what, what, like, what, what's going on? I was like, uh, yeah, but the episode hasn't come out. They're like, don't worry. We saw it. And then like, they drove off. <laughs> yeah it was uh it was a, it was a trip. i don't know torrent i don't know pirating i don't know but it was also find a way trip. i had just finished telling my mom no one's gonna ever recognize me and it happened so they uh, should to prove you wrong. But, but it's yeah, happening more and more so uh especially after this last season of mandalorian where before people thought i went to college with them they're now like oh you're the dude from you know star wars so have there been any moments at cons that are just like a standout in like, this is extremely surreal or this is extremely, I don't know, unexpected, hilarious? Uh, yeah. Can you just give me one second? Yeah. I'll show it to you. Can you guys see this? Yes. yes. Oh, is that a phone? Someone's wallpaper is of Dr. Pershing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so surreal so surreal i took a picture with her she made me like so excited um i was just one of those things i was like why would my wife doesn't have me as her wallpaper you know like <laughs> it just i mean that was just it just made it still made, it made my year it's it's it, that was like seven months ago and i still like i think about it from time to time and that meant a lot to me so what is it how does it feel like having your own star <laughs> one poster because they come out with character posters and oh, it was so yours cool. is great. It was great. Yeah, no, it was cool. I was anticipating it, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, just because they did such a good job in season two of like highlighting the this, you know, the the bigger characters. So I was looking forward to it. A uh, little disappointed that the Funko never came out. I thought that would so happen. I, I mean, like he is, a, he's a, he's tailor made for Funko. So those big eyes and the big glasses. Um, but all that stuff is really cool. Like when they made an emoji, I like flipped. I don't know if you saw it. They made a little Dr. Yeah. Oh, yes. emoji. Yeah. Yeah. All that Especially stuff. Is just, it's, all, it's, all, it's, all, it's all, it's all the cherry on the cake. You know, the cake is getting to work in, you know, this business, you know, getting to work as an actor on this show with amazing people that you'd get to work with and all the, like the, you know, the posters and the, the emojis and the, all that stuff is just like. Is that, am I saying it right? The icing on the cake? Is that what it's? Yeah. Is it, that's, yeah. Thing, yeah. With the, the cherry on the Sunday. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, that stuff is, is cool. But the, the meat of it all is getting to get, getting to act in this world and getting to live in it. Yeah. Having so. done a deep dive on Star Wars now, it's kind of like, you know, the movies and now the shows and stuff. If you could play another role, not necessarily on Mando, just anybody else. Yeah. Do you know who you would want to be? For sure. Yeah, Anakin. I think he's the most nice. flesh, fleshed out character in the entire Star Wars universe. I love that, you know, you watch him, you know, as a kid and he's cool, you're rooting for him, then he, he grows up and then you, you see those teenage years and is and is fighting the evil inside and all that stuff and then 
I remember watching the originals first and I'm like, in my heart, like I hadn't given up on Anakin, you know, like on, on Anakin within Darth Vader, you know, like right. I was rooting for him to like, I'm like, it's your son though. It's your son. Like you can't be like that. And at the end, like, you know, he had this kind of like, um, redeeming quality. And so I just love the entire journey from beginning to end of uh, Anakin's storyline. So if I could play anything remotely like that, that'd be awesome. So we have a running joke that yeah. Baby Yoda is a diva <laughs> on set. Yeah. Just because some other people have been making rumors about other actors. So we decided to be like, okay, Grogu is just like dramatic. So yeah, high diva. maintenance. Oh so my high God. maintenance. Like, what is it like working with like a puppet slash CGI creature? Uh, it's like, I mean, the entourage that he comes with. No, um, it was so cool. <laughs> Like, look at this guy, dude. This guy, I got him right here. Um, uh, he he was he was uh, like he, I only worked with him in the first season, right? Yeah. So I I showed up to, on my first day, and they were like, "Hey, like, do you want to meet your co-star?" I was like, "Sure." <laughs> I was expecting a human being. Then they roll over this like music case, look like there was a violin in there or something like that. And they took out this little baby like this. They're like, here you go. I was like, what, what, what? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I like held him like this. Um, <laughs> no. I was like, he is so cute. Like, what is this? And then when they brought him to life and his eyes opened up and his ears started wiggling and his mouth started moving, I uh, just like, it did something to me. And I remember they had to be like, Omid, you're an imperial scientist. You're an imperial scientist. I'm like, yeah, but he's so sweet. He's so, so cute looking. Like, how can you be so, how can you be mean to this guy? Um, so uh, it, it's, so we had once, we had a couple takes where we did it with the animatronic and it was amazing. It was magical. It was what Star Wars is about, you know, the puppetry and the mastery and the art, you know, artistry of it. And then we had a couple takes where we had a tennis ball in its place. And it was like someone took the life out of the room, you know? Yeah. And here you are acting with this tennis ball. You don't know what this tennis ball is going to look like. I mean, you can do the job as an actor. That's what we're paid to do. And we were, you know, we're trained to do that. But it didn't elicit the same kind of reaction in me naturally that you get with the animatronic. So I'm very, I'm very glad that they, you know, Werner Herzog called them out on it. They said, he said, you don't even need this option. Uh, and they went with the animatronic and, and lo and behold, he's, was the star of the show, you know? So it was, it was pretty, it was pretty amazing. I would love to work with him again, but you know, <laughs> I don't write it. <laughs> I just, I love that story that Warner herself's like, you cowards. You cowards. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> never, never saw that tennis ball after that again. Yeah. <laughs> His power, but yeah, yeah, no, it's amazing to see you all work with. Yeah. Yeah. The creature. <laughs> yeah. You had posted after um, your episode in season three that you got to work with your son on set. So I wanted to ask about that and kind of like elaborate on what that was like. It was it was amazing. Uh, so I had a meeting with the director of uh, that episode, I, uh, Isaac Lee Chung, and we were talking, we were talking about the script, talking about the character, and then we started talking about each other and like get to know each other as human beings. And I'm like, uh, do you have a family? He's like, yeah, I have a, you know, a wife and a daughter. And I'm like, oh, like, are you going to bring him to set? Like, they're like, we can't do that because of COVID and all the COVID protocols. We can't have a guest. But what I'm going to do is like put them in the background so they can go through the testing and go through the COVID protocols of Disney and just have them be on set and then also get to work in the background. And, and like my eyes were like, okay. I was like, get out. It's so cool. He's like, why do you have this? Do you have it? Do you have a do you have a kid? I was like, yes, I do. I'm like, and he's a huge Star Wars fan. And he's like, would you want him to put it? Would you want to put him in the background? I was like, yes, I do. Like, like it was yelling the whole time. <laughs> I was like, yes, I would love that. <laughs> um, and so he's like, yeah, no, of course. I'll, I'll let them know that you you want you want to have your son, you know, be you know part of the background. And within five minutes, one of the ADs called. He's like, okay, we hear you have a son. You want to put him in? Here's the which the paperwork that you need to fill out and all that stuff to do. Uh, and uh and so they got the ball rolling and then he went to his first couple like um uh, costume fittings and he was so he was tiny it just turned six um and uh i was so excited i was like all right miles miles is his name i was like 
Miles, listen, you're going to come to set. You're going to see what daddy gets to do. You're going to get to be part of the show. And this is what action is. This is what cut is. And you're going to follow the direction. And when I'm on stage, when the camera's rolling, I'm not your dad. Okay. I play this character, Dr. Pershing. So let's, you know, let's, I just, you know, you know, just kind of setting him up for the day. And he was so good. Like he knew it. He, he was very good with it. Um, and he got like the VIP treatment. Like they were like, here, try on this, you know, Mon Calamari like hand, you know, like here, this is how this works, Miles. Miles, do you want to get to meet Baby Yoda? And when you get to meet Baby Yoda, it's not like, here, look at this, like this. It's like, let's bring him to life. And like the guys brought him to life and he waved to Miles and he was just like, so he's, I mean, he's got to experience like the best of the best of what it's like to work on that show. And, and at the end of the day, I was like, so Miles, like of all this stuff, and you got to see the volume and like Coruscant and uh, all the puppets. And I was like, so what was your favorite thing? And he's like, dad, the chocolate croissants were amazing. <laughs> And I was like, oh, of course, of course, it's always the snacks with the kids. Uh, um, but he had a great time. I hope like he's he was old enough to remember it, you know, for the rest of his life, at least like, you know, fleeting moments of it. It's a core memory now. Probably. It's a, I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it, it was one of the best days of my life. And and he, I was like, do you, do, you, do you get what daddy does for a living? He's like, yeah. He's like, you get paid to pretend. I'm like, that's exactly it. That's what I, that's what I do. <laughs> So it was, it was amazing, yeah. So what is it like watching the episodes like with your son? Like, oh, it's great. We had a screening uh, with a bunch of my like friends over, and uh, we watched the episode. And people are used to seeing my face on screen, so they, you know, whatever. It's whatever for them. But when <laughs> when, it, when he came on, the whole room, like 20, 30 people, like stood up, gave him a you know standing yeah. you know ovation, and he's like, "What?" They're like, what's going on? And like, he's like, yeah, but I think it was just really cool, like for him to see like what it's like to work behind the scenes and then to see the final product. And then he was actually in the cut. That was my biggest worry as a dad was like, if he didn't make the cut, especially when your background is very common. Uh, but, the, you know, Isaac made sure that that he was he did the best he could do to make sure he was in there and he was in there. And it's and it's part of forever now. You know, it's so cool. He probably already has like a name and a backstory and a Wikipedia page. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's just I, how Star Wars is. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but like he he personally has moved on. He barely thinks about it. But <laughs> <laughs> that's how kids work, you know? Yep. Yeah. And him being a huge Star Wars fan, has that kind of changed your relationship with the saga as a whole? Because like you being a part of it is part of that. And then him being a fan, like a hundred percent. My and knowledge of Star Wars grew exponentially, not as an actor, but as a father. Uh, you know, I did my due diligence. I did the research. I, I, you know, I watched the movies and stuff like that. Uh, doing the homework as an actor. But it wasn't until I started, you know, getting my son involved in the world. Like, I didn't grow up with Star Wars because my parents didn't know what Star Wars was. Like, you know, I was like, when I told my parents, I was like, you'll get this, Arzu. I was like, uh, I was like, I was like, hey, mom, I, I got cast in uh, Star Wars. She's like, what? I was like, I got cast in Star Wars. She's like, what? I'm like, I got cast in a Star Wars. She's like, a Star Wars? Like, you have to put the E in front of it. She's like, oh, <laughs> like that's that's when she got it. Um, so like I so I, for me, I was like, I didn't grow up with it. So I'm, I'm raising my son with it. You know, like I'm trying to do right by the franchise. And I, that's one of my favorite things going back to the conventions is seeing the generation to generation you know, the grandparents to the parents to the kids these days. And I love the transfer of their passion. Uh, and so when I would tell him bedtime stories, and it was almost always Star Wars bedtime stories, I had to know what I was talking about. Like if I was talking about a port, Miles would be like, well, what planet is a pork from? And I would have to have that answer. And so like, I'd be like, oh, he's from the planet. Um, and it's always my pronunciations are maybe like, war like it's only what I read. I might get she's from the planet of Achu or whatever it's called. Uh, am I saying it right? Octo. Do you know? Octo. Octo. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's okay. like, it's beca because uh, it's because of him that, and then we also have this game of like a thousand trivia questions about Star Wars that we just go back and forth, like drilling each other and like, and he, he kills me. 
he absolutely murders me in this game. Um, but uh, but it's because of him that I have grown and that I can participate in a trivia question, so uh, trivia night, so long as there's no pronunciation questions. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about like what you think, like Dr. Pershing, where you have like no idea what happened to him. Because I don't know, like ours and I were both like shocked. We were like, what? Is he okay? Yeah. He's yeah. fine? He's fine. He's fine. Right? I He's know. fine. It's I a statement, know. not a question. He's fine. Yeah. He's, yeah, it's fine. I don't know. And it's really hard not knowing. You know, yeah. it's, you know, I want them to like, be like, all right, well, we'll see you next year or but like, they just don't give you anything, you know, and it was probably for the best because say if they did say, we'll see you next year and they changed their mind. Do you know how yeah. heartbroken I would be? Uh, mm -hmm. So I just go into like the end of every season being grateful for what I had and hopeful for the you know future. But, but in this business, you, you, you can't rely on anything. You, you just got to keep moving forward and, and looking for the next gig, whatever it may be. You know, we can't wait for anything. Oh, one little short thing. Yeah. Was you saying it's a trap? Yeah. Is that a call out on purpose to Return of the Jedi? Totally. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't I get like, it at first. I was, I was like, like, tell Mon Calamari. I'm like, I think that's rude. You know? No. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no. Yeah, it, it was. He split it to a Mon Calamari. It was. A yeah. It was like. It was a hundred percent intentional. Okay. And I was like, I was like, Noah, Noah was one of the writers on the, that episode, Noah Clore. Um, and I was like, dude, I'm like, I don't quite get this line. Like, what does this mean? He's like, oh, it's a callback to, you know, Return of the Jedi when he's when Admiral Akbar goes, it's a trap, you know. And I was like, oh, okay. It's it's a comedy. I get it. It's it's it, you know, I, I sometimes the humor of Star Wars gets lost on me. Um, and I had to be reminded that, you know, this is not a hundred percent like high stakes serious, you know, like it is, you know, it is a family film, you know, show in the end. So, but oh. yeah, but remember, I remember I, did, did I ask you, Arzu, like it was Admiral Akbar, like, is he based off like a Persian dude? Because then he has a son named Aftab and that's yeah, a Persian yeah, word. That's, that means sun, like sunshine. I'm yeah. like, what is up? Like okay, so my dad's I'm I'm a half I'm so Indian. Confused. Are you? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So my father is always like Padme is like that's that's a Indian w word. Uh, Ashoka is you know Ahsoka kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's all like they stole it from us. <laughs> it's gotta be. I mean, like I believe it. Even the, even the attire sometimes kind of looks that way, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of ins it's inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so. um <laughs> That was something that's like always like bothered me as being like, like the Asian, uh, like Middle East influences are like considered alien, but now oh. we're finally getting representation of like people, people. Yeah. on 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 camera. Yeah. So that yeah, but what I, what I love about the Star Wars Star Wars is like you know you're not playing like Earth Earth politics. You know, like I'm not playing an Iranian scientist. You know, I happen to be an Iranian yeah. actor, but like. I'm not, you know, it's just, it's just you, you escape from all that, all that stuff you do, like in the other, other shows like Homeland and Argo and stuff like that. And then, and then you get to live in this fantasy, like sci-fi and it's, it's pretty yeah. awesome to kind of leave that stuff back on earth. Yeah. It's just Imperials yeah. versus Rebels. Yeah. 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 The Akbar thing though, like initially like me thinking Admiral Akbar, I'm like, okay, it was a word. They liked it. They yeah. Used it. Yeah. And then I saw the visual guide for the Red Skywalker and they're like his son, Ufta. I'm like, now hang on. Come on, now, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Who is the Iranian on staff pulling words out? <laughs> That's being like, this know. one works. I, I thought you would know, like, Arzu. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know who it is, oh, but okay. if anybody oh. knows, please let me know. Right, yeah. But it was probably, it's definitely on purpose. Oh, 100%. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. He You're named sure. his son Sunshine. Like, yeah. It, it's a pun. It's, we'll, which get, is kind we'll, of funny get the, for, we'll get to the bottom of this. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny for the people who are like deep, usually like leap live deep underwater like at least in the clone wars episode you know they yeah. don't see the sun <laughs> it's aspirational right right so as we cap it off because we can't conclusively say if dr Bershing's okay or not i'm just gonna ask what is next for you uh you certainly can ask it uh i, you know, I certainly can't answer it because uh, uh, uh -huh. there, there is a, there is something i worked on before the strike and it's a very big show but they haven't released anything like publicity wise, whether, whether I'm part of it or not. Um, but I'm also very excited about it. Aside from that, absolutely nothing. Cause these last eight months I have not been working. <laughs> Cause of the strike. Cause of the strike. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
but we love a tease. So I will end it there and say thank you so, so much for coming on to talk to us about Star Wars and Dr. Pershing and Mando. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> <laughs> if I can move his yeah. hand. He's, he's, yeah. Oh, he just dropped his ball. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> he's going to throw a tantrum now. Oh, yeah. Tantrum. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was great talking to you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. Bye.